For thousands of years, it has been the traditional land of the Huron-Wendat, the Seneca, and the Mississauga of the Credit. Today, this meeting place is still the home to many indigenous people from across Turtle Island, and we'll great, we are grateful to have the opportunity to work on this land. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Daniel Hendrickson, and I, I serve as the chair of the Soldiers Tower Committee, a subcommittee of the University of Toronto Alumni Association. Thank you for joining us today, both virtually and in person, to honour our veterans and their sacrifices. Though construction prevents us from meeting at our usual location beneath the Soldiers Tower, Hart House's historic function as a centre for student life makes it a fitting replacement. Many of the first students to use Hart House were veterans who had seen their colleagues perish in the Great War and many that followed, fought, and died in the Second World War. In the words of historian Desmond Morton, their legacies remind us that it was a world war for the university. Its members died in every theater of war, from Hong Kong and Singapore to Northwest Europe, from the Egyptian desert to the coastal waters of Canada. For those who survived the war, the memory of those names listed on the archway live on in all the strength and joy of their youth and in all the tragedy of hope cut off in its prime. Those men and women were no older than the students who throng Hart House or St. George Street or who marched so solemnly across King's College Circle each June. As we observe a moment of silence this morning to remember the service and sacrifice of members of our university community and beyond, let us also take a moment to remember those who served in more recent conflicts, such as Korea and Afghanistan, lest we forget. Good morning. We gather at Hart House today to pay our respect to the alumni, students, and staff of the University of Toronto who served and died during two world wars and since, to honor our nation's veterans, to lay wreaths on behalf of the many strands of the whole of this community. We remember the tens of thousands of Canadian Canadians who gave their lives during two world wars and we particularly remember those who went out from the halls of this university and never returned. They shall not grow old, as we who are left grow old. The volunteers of 1914 had the illusion of youth that they were invincible. They expected a war where bravery would win the day. And we found a war where endurance in the face of killing on an industrial scale would at best hold the line. As the losses mounted, the varsity would publish photos of the casualties with a brief note. They were from this town, from this family. They went to this school. This is what they were studying, preparing for their future. They are no, they are no longer with us. The dead were buried an ocean away, often in unknown graves. We tried to bring them home to inscribe their names on the walls of Soldier's Tower and on cenotaphs on every town and city in Canada. This year, with the American withdrawal from Afghanistan, we remember the Canadian casualties of the war there. It began with an attempt to overthrow the Taliban, who were sheltering the terrorists who had destroyed the Tin Towers in New York City, and ended with their speedy return. During Canada's 14 years as part of the coalition, 158 soldiers and seven civilians lost their lives. The dead of the two world wars were buried near where they fell an ocean away. The bodies of Afghanistan's ca casualties were brought back to Canada and the country grieved for them. 
We could watch on TV as their fellow soldiers carried the flag-draped casket onto the plane. As the remains were driven along the highway of her heroes from Trenton to Toronto, as their funerals took place in their home communities. We were connected, and we are connected today as we commemorate men and women from your family, your university, your town, your regiment. For some, Afghanistan is remo as remote as the First World War over a century ago. Many of our new recruits were born after the events of 9-11 that sparked that war. For others, it's very real as they continue to deal with the physical and spiritual challenges there the lo loved ones returned with. We remember with thanksgiving and sorrow those whose lives in wars past and present have been given and taken away. Remember th we remember those known to us and those whose names we will never know. We pray for those who are bereaved and those who still suffer the consequences of the conflict. We remember the trauma that many soldiers try to forget. We commit ourselves to, for reconciliation between the nations so that people may live together in peace. The naval hymn was written by William Whiting, who remembered the terror of being on a ship when the crew lost control to a violent storm and the waves roared over the deck for hours before the sea calmed and they returned to safety. It's a prayer for those in peril on the sea. For a hundred years, we've been wearing poppies to remember the fallen. The early ones were designed so that they could be fitted together by ex-servicemen who had lost a hand. Canadian doctor John McRae had conducted the funeral of a friend and was struck by the poppies springing to life through the mud of the battlefield grave sites. Nina Rajagopal will read his famous poem. Lieutenant Colonel John McRae, 1872 to 1918, graduated from University College and the Faculty of Medicine at the University of Toronto, now Temerty Faculty of Medicine. He was a veteran in the South African War. This poem was composed during the Great War in May 1915 while he served as a medical officer at the Second Battle of Ypres. John McRae died of complications from pneumonia in 1918 while in active service. In Flanders Fields by John McRae. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place. And in the sky, the larks still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead, 
Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up your quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands, we throw the torch, be yours to hold it high. If you break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. In 1914, before 15,000 young men left Canada for an uncertain future, there was a church parade in Valcarche, and they sang, Oh God, our help in ages past. Two signalers on the platform waved their flags to let the battalion bands spread throughout the vast crowd, know when to begin. We'll listen to that hymn now. Maisha Biswas has won Legion Essay Awards. She'll share thoughts about the university and the Pacific. Inscribed in the archway beneath the soldier's tower are the names of more than 20 alumni, students, faculty, and staff who gave their lives in the Pacific Theater. The conflict began almost 80 years ago with the Japanese attack on several targets, including Hong Kong. Among the city's defenders were more than 1,900 Canadians, including two University of Toronto graduates, George McDonnell and Faculty of Medicine alumnus, Dr. John Reed. For more than two weeks, Allied forces valiantly defended the city of Hong Kong before being forced to surrender on Christmas Day. What followed was nearly four years of brutal imprisonment during which Dr. John Reed worked heroically and at great personal risk to ease the suffering and to improve the health and living conditions of hundreds of Canadian prisoners of war. The heroic defense of Hong Kong is one of many examples of the hardship and sacrifice Canadians endured to see the liberation of many nations. The sacrifices of those who fought on sea, land, and air in the Pacific Theater will not be forgotten. We continue with the placing of Reese, first for the university. and for the University of Toronto Scarborough.
and for the government. for the alumni. For the faculty. for the students. For Hart House. for the families. For the old comrades, especially in honor of Sergeant Major George McDonnell, veteran of the Second World War, and of the Battle of Hong Kong. For the Canadian Armed Forces. for the University of Toronto Contingent Canadian Officers Training Corps. And for the Soldiers Tower Committee. for colleges, faculties, departments, and programs, for other members of the campus community, for fraternities and sororities.
When the ceasefire took place in November 1918, the soldiers were surprised by the silence. The guns that had threatened them constantly were silent. That silence in memory of the fallen has quickly become the defining moment of our service. It can speak when words fail. Now we too stand and remember in silence.
They shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. That concludes our service of remembrance.